Hello and happy birthday, ZX Spectre. Uh, wait, it's not time yet. Anyway, welcome to this brand new episode of Keep On Beeping. Today I'm going to take a look at one of the most powerful beeper engines for the ZX Spectrum, which goes by the name of ZX7. It's one of only two beeper engines to feature 8 voice polyphony. The author of this amazing routine is Jan Derk from Bratislava, Slovakia. ZX7 is his most famous production, yet he was also involved with some games such as Pickout 2 and Schachmat. Jan got his first computer in 1985. It was a Spectrum 48 Plus, smuggled from the UK by an airplane pilot who was flying the London Bratislava route. Intrigued by the multi channel beeper routines from Mark Alexander and Tim Follin, he soon started to experiment with beeper sound himself. After some 20 attempts, he developed the 8-channel routine that would later become the basis of ZX7. The name was inspired by the popular Yamaha synthesizer DX7. The editor itself was written during a 3-month period in 1988, while Jan was in university. A few copies were sold on an unofficial basis since there was no legal software market in Czechoslovakia till 1989. In 1990, ZX7 was officially released by Slovakian software house Ultrasoft, which was run by Jan's friend Ludo Vitek. Nearly 1000 copies were sold, making ZX7 one of the most popular beeper editors of all time. The success of ZX7 was partially due to the fact that Ultrasoft had a marketing deal with a company named Didactic, which was producing some Spectrum clones and which was selling Ultrasoft products as well. Despite being a very powerful program, ZX7 has one fatal flaw. The song data it produces is huge, which means it is not very well suited for use in demos and games. In fact, Jan didn't expect anyone to do that, so he didn't even bother to include a compiler in the program. He was planning to fix these issues in a modified version of the routine which would have been called ZX12, however this project never materialized. To this day there is only one game which uses the ZX7 routine, which is Marbles of Wisdom. It's a puzzle game made in 2011 by Polish coder Rafał Niaszka which was inspired by the PSP and DS game Puzzle Quest Challenge of the Warlords. The game's soundtrack was made by Mr. Beep. There are also a couple of demos with ZX7 music, namely the 8 channels demo by Mr. Beep, Factor 6 and Tricks, and the Beep Em All series for Atari XL, which I already mentioned in the last episode. By the way, ZX7 is not the only beeper engine made by Mr. Deak. He also produced a 4-channel routine named ZX10, which was used in the game Tetris 3 by Slovak holders František Wojtek and Miloš Novak. Ok, it's time to take a look at the editor. There's only one screen, which has a couple of different modes. After loading the program, you are in menu mode. There's an easy way to tell if you are currently in menu mode. If the word menu at the bottom right appears in yellow, the menu is active. If it's green, then you're somewhere else. Moving around in the menu is done with keys O and P. If you want to hear a demonstration of the sound, go to load, press space and hit play on your tape. Hmm, that was weird. But don't worry, it's supposed to be like this. Select the play option and press space again. Mm, nice stuff, isn't it? If you don't fancy the good old classics, there's another demo block on the tape, which contains a mix of popular Czechoslovakian tunes. Anyway, if you get bored, hit A to stop the playback. Now let's compose something. First of all, clear the demo song with the clear option, then select Set. The interface might be a bit confusing at first, but it's actually very simple. Usage is somewhat more comfortable if you use a Kempston joystick, but our good old rubber keyboard does the trick too. The big four digit number above the piano roll represents the step you are currently editing. The counter is in hexadecimal, so don't get confused. To place a note, place the cursor on the desired piano key, then hold space and press Q. 
to erase a node, hold space and press A. Of course, you can place up to eight nodes in one step. The node length is fixed, so simply repeat nodes if you want a longer tone. To go to the next step, press A. This will also play the step you have just edited. To rewind, press Q. To fast forward 16 steps, press A and P. To rewind 16 steps, press A and O. You can jump to the beginning of the song at any time by pressing Q and O. If you want to copy the contents of the previous step to the current one, hold space and press P. Unfortunately, that's the only copying there is. To clear all the notes from the current step, press space and O. And that's nearly everything you need to know in order to make music with ZX7. By the way, should you be the lucky owner of a Kempston joystick, you can use that in a similar fashion. Keys O and P relate to pressing left and right, Q and A relate to pressing up and down, and space becomes the fire button. To hear what you've composed, exit to the main menu by pressing P and Q. Here you can also adjust the song speed. Select tempo, then change the setting with keys O and P, and finally confirm the changes with key A. Composing stuff with ZX7 takes a long time. I'm not going to pretend I was able to compose anything remotely listenable during this video, so just enjoy the excellent track by Mr. Beep that I'm going to put as background music now. Anyway, let's suppose you finished your song and want to include it in a demo or simply run it as a standalone tap file. This is where things get really tricky. As I've mentioned before, ZX7 does not have a compiler. But that doesn't mean it can't be done. There's a third-party online compiler made by Polish coder XXL, which you can find at this address. Here's how it works. First of all, save a memory snapshot of your song with an emulator of your choice. Be sure to use the SNA format, not the Z80 format. Upload the snapshot uh, to the online compiler. This will output a long list of data. Scroll down this list and find the last entry that is not all zeros. Copy this line number to the field labeled Konietz at the top of the page. You can also specify a loop point if you want. Put zero to loop to the beginning of the song. Now specify the path to the snapshot again and hit Generui, which will output a new downloadable snapshot file. Make sure you write down the start address of the player, which you can find at the top of the song data list. Okay, step one of the mission is complete. Now we still need to convert the recompiled snapshot into a block of tape data. For this purpose, we will need an emulator that can do two things. First of all, it must have a monitor which allows you to view the contents of the RAM. Secondly, it must be capable of dumping the RAM contents as binary blocks. In this video, I will be using Fuse and Real Specky. Okay, now load the new snapshot, then go to the monitor page which has the listed RAM contents. First of all, go to the start address of the player to check if everything went correctly. Most monitors list addresses in hexadecimal, so you might need to convert the number you got from XXL's online compiler. If everything is okay, you should see a DI instruction there. Scroll down until you reach an area where there is nothing but knob instructions. As you might have guessed, knob is the assembly instruction for do nothing. Write down the address of the last red instruction and calculate the length of the song data in memory. Now go to the save binary function of your emulator and specify the start address and data length accordingly. Here 
Hit enter and voila, you're almost done. Now reset your emulator and write a short loader code in BASIC. For example, clear 32767, load quote quote code and the start address of the song. Clear screen, print some text here. And randomize user start address. Save this program to tape. If you're cool, you do that with save song name line 10, which will cause the program to auto run when loaded. Now we need to convert the binary block we created earlier to a format which is suitable for ZX Spectrum tape files. For this you can use the bin to tap utility by Zero Team. Simply drag the binary file over the executable and you're done. Last but not least you'll need a utility for editing ZX Spectrum tape files. There are a number of different ones available. I usually use Tapir which has a very nice and simple drag and drop interface. Now, create a new tape file, put your basic program as the first block and the binary code as the second block. Just save this and Merry Christmas, you're done. Believe me, the first time I did this I felt like I'd gone up quite a few ranks on the nerd scale. I suppose there are easier ways to do this, like using a converter utility such as Snap to Tap. But whatever, this was fun, wasn't it? And with that, my dear friends of the beep, we have reached the end of this episode. Yep, that's right, no fancy tracker edition, no bipolar this time. It sure would be nice to have a tracker interface for the ZX7 engine though. Well, maybe someone will start working on bipolar 2 eventually. Uh, yeah, I'm talking to you, World of Spectrum community. By the way, a special thanks for this episode to Mr. Beep, without whom I probably wouldn't have a clue how to use that Excel. Anyway, that's it for today. Hope you enjoy it and also hope you tune in next time for more crazy one-bit shit. <laughs>